Hello everyone welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to create a residual neural network to classify multiple flower images. This video is a step by step complete tutorial to create a residual neural network. In our last video we have discussed about the complete architecture diagram of ResNet 50. In this video we are going to implement the same architecture. So before we start, just a quick request to all of you guys, those who are first time visiting my channel, don't forget to press the bell icon and the subscribe button because I used to come up with new data science, machine learning, deep learning videos every single week. So without waiting, let's start. So guys, first of all, we need to download the data set. All this data set is available on Kaggle. So you can just go to this link. I have given this link in the description or in resources. So you can download all this data set. So once you will download this data set, you will get a zip file. Just extract that file, create an input data set folder and paste all these subfolders. Now the first step to start the training of the model is to split your dataset into training, testing and validation. For doing that, I'm going to use a small script. And here we are on our Jupyter Notebook. So you need to install this split folder library if it is not installed already. Once you will import this split folder library, you need to provide the input and output path. Then the seed is for the random sampling of the images. So you have to keep the seed as in 42. Otherwise you may get different results because of different initialization of the randomness. Then you have this ratio. So this ratio tells how much percent of images you want to keep as in training then testing, then validation. So I want to keep 60% of the data set for my training, 20% for validation and 20% for testing. So once you will run this part of the code, you are going to get these three folders, training, testing and validation inside the output directory given within your code. And this will have all the other categories of images inside it. Once you have completed the splitting your dataset step, you need to import all of these libraries. So I'm going to import layers, the pre-process function for ResNet 50, then the decode predictions, then from the pre-processing we are going to import image data generator because that will be required for labeling up the images. So guys, those who don't know about these libraries, I have many videos within my channel where I have explained about these libraries in depth. So you can check out those videos. I have added the link in the description. So once you will import all these libraries, you need to provide the height and width of the input layer of ResNet 50 from the architecture discussion that we have in our previous video the transfer learn model takes specific size of input images that's why we need to define the height and width of the input images then you need to provide the batch size i am going to utilize the image data generator here you can check out with multiple augmentations of your images like shear range zoom range, horizontal flip, vertical flip and all. But make sure you are giving this pre-process input function over here that you import it from the ResNet 50 library because that is going to normalize your image based on the model architecture. So one thing to check out over here that the batch size for the test generator is 1. but for validation and the train generator, you can give higher batch size like 32 or some other value based on the images you have. 
Here we are defining our model by giving a base model is equal to ResNet50. You have to put this include top is equal to false because the ResNet50 is trained for 1000 classes of ImageNet dataset. But you want to predict only these five classes of flowers. So you need to put your own dense layer as an output for this ResNet50. Here we are taking the weights is equal to ImageNet because we wanted to have the transfer learned model from the ImageNet datasets. Now this X takes the output of this base model. You need to give some additional layers after the output of this ResNet50. I'm going to take this global average pooling layer but you can try out with multiple dense layer combinations over here. So what actually it is doing, it is not taking the last layer of this ResNet50 instead of that last layer. We are going to put one global average pool layer and one dense layer. Now your prediction will be one additional dense layer in front of this X. So if you see this train generator dot num classes returns you the number of classes within your data sets. So I can run this and show you over here. So as you can see, the strain generator dot num classes is returning you up five, which are the five classes within the strain test and validation data sets. Now, after applying this dense layer, it becomes a transfer learned model where you are utilizing your own classes to predict from the pre-trained ResNet 50. And here we are defining a transfer learned model, which takes the input from this ResNet 50 and the output is the prediction or the final most layer. Now you can keep the layers of your transfer learned model as in trainable or non-trainable. If you will keep them trainable, your model may take higher amount of time because you will have more trainable parameters. For now, I do not want to train the pre-tained weights because they are the advantage while taking the transfer learned model. If you want to learn how these transfer learned model works in depth, you can take my course on Udemy where I have explained complete details about transfer learning and advanced computer vision. Now we are going to compile the model and just run it for multiple epochs. I am not going to run it again because this may take huge amount of time. After running this, you will get the total loss over here. Now you are going to save this model as an H5 file and then you are going to test model for the testing data set. So you can see that I am getting 82% accuracy for my testing data set. So I have a complete script to generate the confusion matrix. You can utilize the same script. I have given the link for GitHub in the description so that you can also follow the same code. This code generates the confusion matrix and you can see the diagonal terms are showing up the correct prediction. We, our model is doing pretty good with only 10 epochs. So these are the advantages of using transfer learned models. So as in closing remarks for this lecture, I'll just request you guys to press the subscribe button and the bell icon and support when maths meet coding so that I will come up with multiple new exciting deep learning videos in future. Thank you guys. Bye bye and take care.